How important is New Hampshire going to be tonight? Because people haven't actually finished voting and we have not started counting yet. I think it's very important. Witness the fact that President Trump came here seven times last year. I think he's been in New Hampshire this year almost that many times. He was at a polling post place today. Uh, I think obviously he's trying to score a knockout punch yeah. and end this process early. If Nikki Haley can win or come close, I think that keeps her alive. Uh, if she were to win, obviously the money would be dramatic. If she comes close, probably not quite so much, but certainly she has shown she's the only one left standing. So if you don't want Donald Trump to be the nominee, she's the candidate you have to vote for. Well, but the polls suggest right now that not enough people will vote for her or want to vote for her. Right. 22 points behind the latest Suffolk University Boston Globe poll, Trump at 60 percent. We always talk about New Hampshire as the potential for an upset, right? Because historically that has happened. How likely is it to happen this time around? Well, Dave Scanlon, our Secretary of State, uh, learned from Bill Gardner, who was always great at predicting the turnout. Mm -hmm. And he predicted a record turnout among the undeclared voters. Yeah. There are 350,000 of them. If there's a really significant turnout there, you offset that margin in the Republican Party. And we'll see. One of the reasons you should have a state like New Hampshire go first is those undeclared voters represent the widest swath of voters in the country. Mm -hmm. And it tests your elect electability in a general election. So uh, it's going to have to be a very large independent turnout, but I think if Haley were to win or come close, there'll be a lot of Republicans who may support the president's policies, but start hearing her message of conservatism without chaos. What do we say when, what do we mean when we say come close? Nikki Haley is going to try to spin anything into a moral yeah. victory here Correct. if she doesn't win it outright. Right. What would impress Steve Dupree? I think if you're six points or less, okay. um, I think that's saying, wow, that's pretty incredible effort considering you're running against an incumbent. People forget mm -hmm. Donald Trump is running almost as an incumbent president. So I think that would put her within striking range. I think that immediately opens up more money, more excitement. Other people who aren't paying attention take a look. But make no mistake about it. I watched the John McCain campaign go from a 17-point victory in 2000 in New Hampshire, yeah. and then they met the Darth Vader of politics <laughs> when they hit South Carolina. Yeah. It's very tough there, and she's down in the polls. But wow. I think it would it would fundamentally alter the dynamic, at least for a while. Huh? Well, and South Carolina is her home state, which may make it all the more important to her as an individual oh, and sure. as as a candidate. If we could just talk, though, about the New Hampshire process. You mentioned that Donald Trump came here, what, seven times last year, maybe an equivalent now. Yeah. Isn't New Hampshire supposed to be about you barnstorm, you go to every diner, you sit in the living rooms, you talk to these voters, you get up close and personal. He's doing big rallies. Right. A handful of them. Has he broken what the New Hampshire primary process is, what it's no. supposed to be for you? No, I think he's unique. I think if Arnold Schwarzenegger were running for president because he was a movie star, he'd get that same kind of crowd. I think Donald Trump made a very smart decision in 2016. He was a celebrity. People love seeing celebrities. I worked for Pete McCloskey in 1972. He had crowds of 20. When Paul Newman came with him, they went to 1,000. <laughs> I used to tell McCloskey it was for him. That wasn't true, but <laughs> the star power made the difference. Huh. Donald Trump was smart to leverage it. I think he's a unique candidate. I think Nikki Haley's done it the right way. There is some nationalization of this, though, because of social media. But I think the way you earn it, if you're a Nikki Haley, you have to do it the way she's done it. Uh, five, seven stops yesterday at restaurants, yep. making the pitch. Yeah. Let's hear from Nikki Haley uh, speaking uh, in front of supporters in New Hampshire, taking aim at the former president earlier today. We should want to win the majority of Americans. But the only way we're going to do that is if we elect a new generational conservative leader. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. But rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. You know I'm right. Chaos follows him. We've heard a lot about chaos. And of course, we've heard a lot about age in this race. How much of an issue is the 80-year-old versus the 80-year-old to, frankly, an aging population here in New Hampshire? It is an aging population, but I think that you're seeing a lot of people would like to turn the page and go to the Nikki Haley, Chris Sununu generation hmm. of younger Republicans. I remember in Ronald Reagan, when he skipped the first debate in Iowa in 1979, people said he was too old hmm. and he was 69 years old. He'd be a youngster <laughs> in this he race would. today. So I think people, notwithstanding the fact we have an aging demographic, I think even older citizens say it's time to turn the page. Maybe they know best. <laughs> I was at a Nikki Haley event a few days ago and someone in the audience said, 
you know there's a lot of senior citizens here. And she said, I'm not being disrespectful when I right. when I say that, but it, it was just interesting. And of course, this also, from a policy perspective, comes up when it's the Social Security question right. and the retirement age, something yeah. Joe had discussed with Nikki Haley several months ago. It's made right. the rounds and right. uh, advertisements that have been running in this market from tr the Trump campaign and, and those supporting him. Did she do enough on the policy front for voters here? Because his ads have been specific and targeted, and mostly she talks about a new generation of leaders. It's mm -hmm. kind of this vague idea. Yeah. I think, you know, <clears throat> everybody runs a perfect campaign the morning after the election's over. I think she would have been smarter, in my opinion, to ha put more beef on those policy points early on. And frankly, I think she should have been on the offense against President Trump tactically early on. Now the battle's joined, it's a little easier, but it's a fine line because Nikki Haley wants some people who voted for Donald Trump in the past to come her way. As Chris Christie found out, you don't get very far when you spend your whole time insulting the people <laughs> indirectly who voted for Donald Trump. Yeah. So she had to walk a fine line, right. I think perhaps a little too cautious. I'm, of course, I'm a McCain acolyte, so I think you should have the press around you all the time, which <laughs> is considered anathema. You're going to make mistakes, <laughs> and in the day of social media, you're going to make them. As she showed, though, with the slavery question, if you recover yeah. quickly enough, you get a pass. So I would have you know, thrown the long ball a little bit more, but that's probably why nobody wants me advising their <laughs> campaigns anymore. I remember when the media was considered John McCain's base <laughs> uh, at one point. Point, there was right? a certain amount of truth to that, <laughs> well, by the way. Sure enough. Yeah. Uh, President Trump took a question from a reporter about Nikki Haley earlier today in New Hampshire. Let's listen. Mr. President, Haley says that she's staying in through Super Tuesday. I don't care. Is she a threat to you? No, no. She, and I don't care if she stays in. Let her do whatever she wants. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Tell her to do whatever she wants. It doesn't matter, he said. Uh, will he be feeling differently by the end of the night? Depends on the results. Like yeah. I say, he has a chance to have a knockout punch here today. Um, if it's close or she wins, she continues the fight on. It's a daunting road. The other thing that happens in both parties, like it's done with uh, President Biden, the rules change. The Republican National Committee is Donald Trump's committee. He is the incumbent. So the rules have changed. There are more primaries on Super Tuesday. I remember when Super Tuesday used to be five or six states. Now it's 12. More of the states are winner take all. And hats off. I mean, just politically, Donald Trump and his team have put together one of the most organized, well-run primary campaigns I've seen in 30 or 40 years. Wow. They're very disciplined, they know what they're doing, and they've done a very good job executing on their game plan Splitting and keeping him to the script. Huh. Final question for you. You live here in New Hampshire where Chris Sununu is governor. He's been elected and re-elected multiple times. Mm -hmm. He has given Haley his full-throated backing, mm -hmm. not just endorsed her. He spoke with Joe and I earlier this week. He has made the rounds on media. He has done this in a way that you could maybe say Kim Reynolds, the governor of Iowa, didn't necessarily do for Ron DeSantis, even though she did endorse him. DeSantis didn't win. He's now out of the race. What happens for Chris Sununu and his legacy as a politician in New Hampshire if Haley does not win or come close tonight? I don't think it hurts him. In fact, I think it helps him. Here's why. There are so many of these politicians you've seen now jumping on the endorsement bag yeah. bandwagon. The average American goes, that's not political courage. That's cowardice. Chris Sununu, when he supports you, like when I ran for re-election as a committee man and wasn't going to win, he puts yeah. everything into it. I think people respect that. They go, you win or you lose. You actually do what you say you're going to do and you commit to it. So I think he comes out of this with even greater stature. He's already said that if Donald Trump's the nominee, he's going to vote for him. He's the kind of Republican we need more of instead of these fair-weather friends that seem to populate <laughs> wow. all of Congress, wow. by the way, in both parties.